so he calls 911 on a futury like screen Skype phone thing and he gets he gets an automated menu like a really bad yeah. 911 automated menu I wrote in my notes in the future 911 puts you on hold and I wrote okay that's also true it's okay yeah We're predicting a lot of stuff they might as well have had the bot be like, hi, you've reached 911. Unfortunately, the woke left has defunded us. <laughs> so I am a robot who can't help you. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Oh, okay. So now we're not even friends at all. I see how it is. We let you host the show one time and I lose your friendship. I, you, I said you're the, I didn't say a Eli, an Eli Bosnick. I gave you a definite I'm article. Say, Noah ranks the friends when he hosts. Okay. My second best <laughs> friend, Eli Bosnick. There you go. How dare you? And we also, you should be happy about two. A lot of people are mad that they got demoted. That's true. It's I'll fine. take the silver. You should be happy with silver. Yes. We also, sorry about that. Thomas is here too. We also have veteran <laughs> guest masochist who had to listen to our little fight just now. He's also an elite level crokinole player. Yes. Amazing. Thomas Smith is here. Thomas, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. So happy to be here. Excellent. So Thomas, what are you here to do? What are we going to be breaking down today? Okay. What are you here? <laughs> what would you say is you yeah. here, Thomas? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> Short answer and long answer. Short answer is we watched The Sixth Day, which is a story about cloning and how, like, maybe if you multiply really stale actors times two, it'll somehow make like a full actor, but it doesn't. <laughs> long answer is Eli. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go over our text messages, Eli. Eli asked me, can you do GAM? We're doing the sixth day with Schwarzenegger. And I said, oh, fuck yes. But is that religious in some way? I don't remember. And he says, it has demons, ergo, totes religious. And I said, <laughs> I don't remember any demons. demons. <laughs> this is from the year 2000. I watched it around that time as like a 14-year-old, which is why I really remember the side boob of this movie. That's like the one yeah. <laughs> memory that stuck in my brain at that time. Don't remember demons. Now, here's the funny part. In a weird way, you were right, Eli. We'll get to it, but there are demons in this movie, and and we're gonna get to it. It's it's a very wait, <laughs> still horrified. There's demon. Did I miss the demons? Oh, there is a demon. Is this a metaphor? No, no. There's a demon in this movie. You'll get you'll you'll see, Heath. Interesting. Hmm. This movie is definitely anti atheist, so it's fuck. It counts for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, Eli, uh, elaborate a little bit. How bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Total Recall. But the plot was way too sensical and streamlined for you. <laughs> you will love this movie. Hey, forget episode one. This is the real Attack of the Clones, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? There is so much. Sure. I got to say, <laughs> best worst rule of cool. Okay. Ooh. That's, you know, that's a common Schwarzenegger thing. That's a common kind of 80s, 90s movie for the kids. You know, you tried for specifically like, you know, me at that age, you like you throw in the cool toy to sell the whatever. This has a bunch of that for no fucking reason. Like we get helicopters that turn into like fucking planes that turn it just for no reason. <laughs> it's like they had a movie and then they're like, this sucks. Can we sell toys out of it, maybe? And so they tried a bunch of things that maybe would be toys, but they don't. They suck. Ooh, did they? Did they? I'd I buy think toys so. From this. I don't. <laughs> I'd There's buy the, no way there I'd was the a six-day line thing. of toys. <laughs> if there was a six-day line of toys, that's when culture peaked. <laughs> That's, we did it. Well, then you tell me why the fucking helicopter plane thing with the remote control, it's fucking stupid. It's the dumbest thing. There's no reason. So much it better than the Transformers. Stupid. I'm going on record. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a text from Andrew. I've been fired from that podcast. Just oh. for being... Being on the show with you saying that. It's okay. I can be wrong about Trump getting in trouble right. for you. I just got a text from Andrew that I'm fired from our show. How do you do that? Smart lawyer. All right. I'm going to go with best worst. Go fuck yourself. So <laughs> there's, they work the line, go fuck yourself into this movie once. And it's pretty great how they do it. Oh, this is a clone based movie. So they relate the idea of, mm. oh, if you had a clone of yourself, go fuck yourself. And it's pretty funny. But then they go back and they try to revisit the line. Yeah. But 
I think it's a PG-13 movie, so they were only allowed to use fuck once. So they yep. had to incorrectly quote themselves and say, mm-hmm. go screw yourself when they call back to it. It's the best. Yes. Remember when I said something like, not exactly, yeah. this, but I said something like. <laughs> Something-ish to go yeah. fuck yourself. No, you're totally right. This exactly was the PG-13 border at that time. One side boob, yeah. kind of. Yep. A full butt for like two seconds is okay. And one F word. You were literally allowed one F word yeah. per PG. And it hit all of it. It's yeah. Like, and it had to be an oblique side boob, like a quick, yeah. you know, oblique, like bad. You tried, I tried to pause it a bunch of times. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I definitely did. <laughs> did you catch it? You, you got the number back okay. in the day. I mean, when I was 14 and there was nothing. <laughs> oh, like, right. Yeah. No, of course. Not, not recent, not yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not yeah, yesterday. No. Definitely didn't. I also have one other best worst. I'd like to say best worst. My notes are just naming what happens in the movie. <laughs> yeah. All my That's a lot of I'm it. I'm just like, and then this, this is crazy. It's just the stuff that happens. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. It sucks when it turns us into the Chris Farley and this is a Chris Farley show. Yeah. And we're just like, uh, remember, remember that time? When, remember when Arnold, he like, you were he's in flying the, a helicopter with, the movie? with remote control for no reason. Remember that? The broken glass. <laughs> It was cool. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. I'm so stupid. Come on. Idiot. I'm going to go with best worst practical special effect. And look, Ugh. there's a lot of bad special effects in this movie. All right. But the best one, and I think we <laughs> I all know, know what, what we're talking, talking about. about. Someone gets their foot <laughs> shot off. And it is. It's the silliest thing. It is pirate costume on Halloween as done by a five-year-old level bear. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's like the bad magician taking half his thumb off and putting it back. To, it's like that level of leg shot. But with off. screaming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to talk about this movie in a second. But first, we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be back with all you need to know about the sixth, which is hard to say, day. And sled? Check. Pitons? Check. Knowing what a piton is? Oh, definitely not check. Yeah, me neither. Uh, what's a piton? Hey, guys, what's with all the uh, winter gear? Oh, hey, Thomas. We were just gearing up for the secular bonus episode we just released for our patrons the day after tomorrow. Yeah, it's got tidal waves, super cold air that chases people, and it even has wolves that somehow survive all that stuff so they can attack some people. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Where can I hear that right now? Great question. Well, you can pledge as little as a dollar over at patreon.com forward slash God awful, and you'll get access to all 67 of our secular bonus episodes. We've done stinkers like Batman versus Superman, the Justice League Snyder Cut, Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, also bad movies that were not made by DC. We do some other That's ones. right. We did some that aren't made by DC. Yeah, a few. And I can get all that for as little as a dollar a show. As little as a dollar a show, Thomas. You sure can. Plus, you'll be supporting the show and helping us not starve. Yeah, that too. Patreon.com slash godawful. That's amazing. I'm going there right now. Hey, do you guys mind if I mention my Patreon stuff while I'm here? Of course, dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Oh, sweet. Okay. So there's Patreon.com slash. And you got to stop eating cheese at midnight. What? We love midnight cheese. Our heart does not love it. I don't believe you. Keith, what did we say about listening to yourself? Thomas. He's lying. He's lying. Hey, guys. Oh, what's up with the two Heaths? Oh, hey, Thomas. Heath has a little bit of trouble taking care of himself. So I, I cloned him so he, he could talk to we himself do. about the things he needs, like therapy. Exactly. Exactly. Wait, therapy is a part of self-care? Sure is. And now it's easier than ever with BetterHelp. Oh, what's BetterHelp? Ooh, do we get one point or two for that? How does that work? I think it should be two points. I think we should get Clones two. Clones don't and we, get both two get points. We had no, this fight. Yeah, we I had think this it is fight. Ah, oh, fine, fine. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, good stuff. Wait, why did you need me for this one? Oh, to keep him from smooching. It always ends up smooching. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Or, or is it? Is it? 
<laughs> is it? You're leaning. I'm leaning. We're leaning. You're a beautiful man. I am. We are beautiful men. <laughs> Told you. And we're back. And we're going to start this one off with some scary music. But but it was made on like Mario paint, so it's more silly than scary. <laughs> oh my god! Bam, 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 bam. I still remember that from even like fucking seven. God, it's so good. <laughs> I wrote down that we open with a music cue that suggests we're being chased by an Apple II through an abandoned factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Tetris is standing right behind us. That's what the music is telling us. <laughs> and then we get a Bible quote. So this fucking counts. This is yep, absolutely, absolutely a Christian movie. The quote is, by the way. God created man in his own image and behold, it was very good, blah, 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 something after that. But here's the thing. No, it wasn't good. Like, yeah. that's <laughs> such a, like, Same page note. one of the Bible. I'm gross. There's, it <laughs> yeah. was not very good. I know. I love who, like, there's a little bias in that too. Like, who are we to believe wrote that sentence? You know? <laughs> I want to know. Like, did God write it or did like a human write it? Like one of the early humans, who are we supposed to think? And then they're like, oh, I look look at me. I'm great. Like, <laughs> fucking awesome. Moses is just sitting there on the mountain. Okay, so you, you did all the nature things and you said it was good. And then you did, man, would you would you also say that is good? I uh, would say that is good. All right. I mean, I'm chafing a lot. Are you looking at this? It's <laughs> desert. Yeah. I had just go fuck yourself diarrhea the other day. Would you say that's good, God? Would you say that's... <laughs> Good. It was free will. It's free will to get there. <laughs> go fuck yourself, <laughs> diarrhea. You up? <laughs> right. So we get the silly, scary music, and what they're setting up is a bunch of news clips about the state of the universe that we're in. Mm -hmm. First, they tell us about how we cloned a sheep, which had actually happened in the 90s when this was made, already happened. And then we see a bunch of stuff about the politics that happened since. So cloning yeah. got banned because... They made a clone and it had to be destroyed for some reason. So now it's illegal to clone human beings in this world. Oh, can I just throw out there real quick that that was almost my best worst, which is best worst red herring. Because they're like, well, you all know what happened to the clone yeah, several yeah. moments throughout the movie. And then they never address it. No, no. Yeah, exactly. There should be the toward the end of the movie. You should get the reveal of like the main disgusting clone. They have a disgusting clone at the end, but they should have made it like, no, this is the first clone. He wasn't actually killed and he's all gross or something. You know, isn't that what? Yeah, it's like a fucking Elden Ring villain at the very end, bursts out <laughs> yeah. of a tank. Yeah, exactly. Nope. Put that in there for no reason. It's nothing. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, so Schwarzenegger's going to be like somehow magically the clone that got created, but then he's hidden somewhere and he pops out. Ooh, that would be good too. Nope. nope. Nothing like that. Oh, even better. Have that clone help. Schwarzenegger take yeah. down the pony. He's like, go. oh, I'm an abomination. I shouldn't be a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah. Get a little Goonies friendship going. So we learn about the cloning situation. And now we fast forward, well, a little bit <laughs> to the near future. That's what the title uh. card says. So <laughs> we, we open up here on the near future from 1999 when this was made. So like now, the movie's supposed to be about now, like 2022 ballpark. Yeah. I think, right? And now, Eli, if you would like to uh, take a nap, find something to do, Heath and I are going to talk about this football in the future <laughs> for 45 minutes. Their star, the star quarterback who doesn't matter at all, they put in for no reason. Like, it's it's a complete waste of time, is uh, Johnny Phoenix. Okay, question. Why do screenwriters lose the ability to think of human names <laughs> the minute they sit down to type like Ayn fucking Rand? Yeah, I was going to say, they went to the Ayn Rand school of naming people. This yes, was the quarterback yeah. Cuffy Miggs Johnny Phoenix. Smith's Lightning. <laughs> what? Dave, just use your name. How about we just have it be two? Crave. <laughs> two names is fine. Johnny oh. Phoenix nailed it. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. Isn't, okay. Heath will know this. Isn't Keanu Reeves' character in that surfing movie Johnny Utah or something like that? Johnny he is Johnny Ooh. Utah, yes. Yeah, so is that like they're just like, oh, you just do Johnny plus a place and that's the name. <laughs> yep. Johnny Texas, Johnny Kansas, Johnny Florida, Johnny fucking, we got a million of these. It's great. Also, I mean, it's, a, I think, a metaphor, an amazing metaphor. Like a phoenix rises from the ashes to be created again. Like, oh, oh my. yeah. Oh. A brilliant, you know what? I changed it's my actually mind. actually really it's good writing. Movie. It's it's a great movie. By God. Yeah. You're welcome. Here's my question question about the football, Heath. Were you to understand, so it's the f near future. Parts of this movie 
I think are in the year 900 million thousand billion and parts of it <laughs> yeah. are in the year like 1999.4. Right. Like yeah. 2000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this, the future football thing, we're to believe that Johnny Utah fucking has a like display in his helmet that's saying. Oh, he has like, like an embedded Terminator thing, but for, you know, terminating defenses with his amazing <laughs> QB skills. Here's my question to you. Is that a modification of the guy or the way the graphic is, it looks like it's in his helmet. So, or is that a normal thing for the game in the future is what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does appear to be on the inside of the helmet. I really wanted him to like get an ad and he's like, shit, I can't see the receiver. I got to skip that, skip that, skip that. <laughs> then just get absolutely murdered by the def defense. He's just got to do whack-a-mole on pop-ups for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I love about this. This heads up display is able, this is great for the football uh, geeks among us, Heath. It's able to see a fucking lineman and go, possible blitz, possible <laughs> blitz, <laughs> which is something that I can do. Like any yeah. person who's touched a football can be like, there's a guy, he might One of come those 11 me. is the mic. Yeah, man. One of those 11 is the mic. If it's a blitz, one of them or more would be blitzing. Yes. The defense, the ones facing me. Yeah. Wow. What a very useful. Got it. Warning. <laughs> they plan to tackle you for the football you're holding. <laughs> How is this laptop the size of a VCR running this thing, by the way, from the sideline? This is impressive because they actually show us the coach on the sideline, like, which, you know, he should be holding uh, an iPad, I guess, would be the thing of now that would do this. But he's got yeah. the old timey 1999 laptop. It's really like a Zach Morris laptop. It's really big. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted it like a shot of Bill Belichick at the sidelines breaking his laptop so Johnny can't use his for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an excellent football reference, Eli. Wow. Yeah, it is. Thank yeah, you. he would have disabled the uh, in-helmet displays somehow for the other team. I don't like football, but I do like cheating. Anyway, this uh, enhanced quarterback with the amazing Google glasses <laughs> or whatever he's got on his visor of his helmet, he, despite all that information, gets wrecked, <laughs> taken off the field in a stretcher and into an ambulance. And then we cut to inside the ambulance and there's what appears to be like an agent of the football team in the back of the ambulance calling his boss being like, oh, we got a lifetime contract with a vegetable, man. What do we do? Yeah. And what they do is murder him in the back of this ambulance. Yep. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, honestly, this tracks for how the NFL treats players. Like, <laughs> it is the natural conclusion that the NFL's policy follows. Well, but this was a white player, though. So, you know, not really. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that, that's that's one of the more aspirational parts of this future in this movie. <laughs> At least he didn't kneel during the anthem. At least he's a patriot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Fuck awesome. everybody. This is y Yondar. I don't know if the Marvel stuff, but yeah, Yondu. Yondu. Michael Rucker. Yeah, this guy from from that other zombie show too. And, and Mallrats. You're right. He has a lot to do. Like his occupation within this movie universe is like he burns the fucking candle at both ends, as they say. He's security, but also team manager, I guess. And like handles the the putting down of the player in the, yeah. in the ambulance. He's got it. He's a busy work day is on yeah. the door to door sales, reanimation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, classic problems with the org chart in this company. <laughs> yeah. And it all boils. He's kind of like the weed eater at a restaurant, you know, just like whatever's happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you need me to murder a clone that got out? Yeah, I guess that's my job too. I get we had a game this Sunday. There's another game. The team plays every Sunday. You know this. But okay, yeah, sure. I'll go also kill Arnold Schwarzenegger on my fucking spare time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that happens. The guy who does all that stuff, he's the agent and the, the murder in case there's needing to be murder. He murders the quarterback. And then we cut to Arnold Schwarzenegger looking in the mirror in the morning at his house and asking his wife if he looks different to her right now. Okay, this, this is the craziest intro. I spent so much of my human life thinking about why these lines are in the movie. Yeah. He says, do I look different? She says, why? What did you do? He says, I shaved my mustache. And she says, you never had a mustache. This <laughs> never gets no. revisited or explained. <laughs> it was like someone was like, I found an old screenplay where people were waking up in the shredder in the back. And I don't want to write the first six lines of our scene. Oh. Tape, glue, white out. Right. There's no point. You're right. Because like I thought it was like, oh, a fake out. Like he's already a clone. But right. No, you're right. like there hasn't even been any discussion of that yet. And there was no mustache involved. 
in either clone. At any like, moment. That's not part of it. So presumably this character was just like, oh yeah, you're right. I never did have a mustache. Totally. And they just move on. It's improvised dialogue where someone's really bad at improv and the thing they come up with cancels out the entire <laughs> scene that you just did. Yep. Well, I shaved my mustache. You never had a mustache. No. Michael Scarn, <laughs> FBI. I murder all of us. Okay, well now the movie's over. Now the movie's over. Cool. This is also, podcast listener, this is part of a golden fucking era of cinema when Arnold Schwarzenegger was a movie star, but we all stopped acknowledging that he was from Australia <laughs> and Australia. a giant weightlifter-sized person. I think he's from Austria and not Australia. Australia. Um, I don't think many people ever acknowledged he was from Australia. Well, they should. No, nobody, they should. nobody acknowledged the Australian part of that. <laughs> he's half koala. So <laughs> They did start doing that. That, that. This is like actually the end of that. Try. This, there was a good 15 years. Like after the first two movies, we're like, well, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's fine. He literally had movies where like his character name was like Johnny America, born and raised FBI agent. You know, like yep. home, Brook Red, Kansas. Fe yeah, they didn't care. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm from... <laughs> From Kansas, born and raised. Yeah, and we have the first insane line where that obviously doesn't make sense for him. The little girl comes in, right? They're going to fuck, and then she cock blocks him. <laughs> oh my and then God. little girl comes in, she's like, I want a piggyback ride. And the line that they've written in the script is, you won't be able to do that for much longer. World famous weightlifter Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once she goes from 33 pounds to 37 pounds, he's out. He can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. That begins the trend we get to see in this movie. It could have been a best worst, but I couldn't figure out what to do with it. We get to see horny Arnold not quite get to fuck his wife, what, 17 times in this so movie? So many times. So many times. Absolutely. This was Arnold insisting that, like, it needs to be clear that I was almost fucking this woman constantly in the <laughs> she movie. She totally wants to fuck me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it says in his contract we have to include 17 mentions of her wanting to fuck him. 17, yeah. And you have to win a fight with Vin Diesel? I don't understand what's happening. It feels like the actress was sneaking over to the screenplay every time there was a sex scene and just whiting it out at the very end. <laughs> well, I guess the camera cuts away. <laughs> oh, no, you got cock blocked by the child actor that I told to come in here. Yeah, <laughs> so Arnold carries his daughter out into the house and... We get another setup of the cloning universe here. On the TV, mm. there's a commercial for a company called Repet. Mm -hmm. So they, they clone your pet, like your, your family dog dies and they, they clone it and you don't have a, a dead dog anymore. You have the same dog back. Is there a problem? This is like the first of so many times when I'm watching this and I was like, but cloning's good, right? It's okay. We should do that, clearly. Let's tackle this monster at the outset. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> is the bad guy of this yes, movie. Absolutely yes, correct. absolutely correct. Absolutely 100%. Cloning is amazing. Why would we not want to clone like everything? I mean, the very least pets. Like say we hold off on humans. At the very least pets, 100%. 100. Yeah. And let's do humans also, for sure. Yes. And as our exposition dump informs us, they have all the same memories. Yeah. So it's literally the exact same pet slash human. Right. Yeah. One of the big drawbacks in the argument, like in re reality about this is that the technology is not there yet. So we have to make sure it's there. But, but the, this is a movie and they're just like, it's there. So it's amazing. We're to understand that like every pet in the U.S. Has, is a clone at this point. So it sounds right. like you've got that figured out. <laughs> And there's one other weird thing about this scene. The exposition dump, they're not watching it on TV. The, as we are about to learn, dying dog is watching it on TV. He's just sitting there like me watching TikTok being like, oh, that's the replacement coming through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, maybe I should get one of those. I feel like all of the, like, we're going to get cloning and it's going to be fuck stuff, right? Like, that's going to be the... Just like the internet, it's going to start as like, oh, a bunch of fuck stuff, and then we're going to like move from there. I feel like that's what's going to happen. Well, no, it always starts as nerds doing science. The first commercial thing is fuck stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we have to wrench from the hands of the sex weirdos, and then you can bring your cancer kid back to life. <laughs> I would amend that to say it actually starts as a nerd trying to do fuck that's stuff what I'm and saying. then passing it off as, oh, it, like, no, no it's totally, it's science. Yeah, cancer. No, I meant cancer. Can yeah, that's oh, just oh. I was Good point. Testing yeah, it. This fuck doll does have can just making cancer sure it's durable abilities. for the cancer. Yeah. Yep. You're welcome. Exactly. And one other thing that we get from this scene, which is going to be very important to the movie, is that the daughter wants a sim pal. Oh my god. Which I will tease you right now. 
is the most horrific thing ever to appear on cinema. I 100%. This, podcast listeners, you'll recall, is the demon of the movie. This fucking Ooh, thing. Yes. Unintentional <laughs> horror movie. When this thing, cut, we, we brought it up. We have to talk about it now, even though it's like five scenes from now. I lost it. My notes are like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like every time it even panned to Goddamn it. Goddamn terrifying. I, I literally typed out, you know, in this Monty Python where it's like, it wouldn't have bothered to write, ah, you know, like I actually did. I was like, ah. <laughs> like every time it showed it. It is the, f <laughs> oh my God. It's okay. We'll, we'll get there. Our notes are just converting into different religions in the hopes of banishing <laughs> this creature from our screens. Yeah. I started talking in ancient tongues, trying to get it to unspawn. Like I just did. I tried everything. Yeah. The power of Christ does not compel her, by the way. We tried. No, it. it does not. Jesus Christ. Terrifying. Oh my God. Listeners. I know we have some people who make movies out there listening to this podcast. If you send me the Sim doll so that I can sneak <laughs> it into Thomas's bedroom oh my when God. we're all hanging out in July for Matreon. I will give you all the Eli points. Okay. I'll personally review movies into your ear for a year if you can get me a Sim doll also, to hide under Thomas's bed. Also, listeners, if we have anybody who actually knows how to clone human beings and you can clone a <laughs> small girl, that's pranks what first, we're watching in the movie. First. <laughs> that would be great, too. For the prank. Just for the prank. Ethically. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, Arnold leaves his house here. It's, he's going to work. He works at a... Helicopter chartering company. Yeah. And so he gets in the car with his co-worker, played by Michael Rappaport, and uh, they drive to work in the, a fancy future car. It's self-driving. Yeah, future car. Can we just congratulate Michael Rappaport for not even acting a little for however long <laughs> his fucking career is? <laughs> hey, how's it fucking going? I'm Michael Rappaport. Hey, dude, what's up? You want a fucking beer? I'll be in the next movie if you need me. The exact same <laughs> continuing character with the exact same relationship to everybody I ever meet in any cinematic fucking year. We are all in the Rappaport verse and we need to deal with it. So anyway, they're driving to work and what we learn here is that Michael Rappaport has a VR girlfriend. So that's part of the future technology. This was also almost my best worst, which was best worst underutilized technology. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll get to it. Yeah. We also learn it's Arnold's birthday today and he's going to have a surprise party and he gets Michael Rappaport. He like bluffs Rappaport into revealing that there is in fact a surprise party by doing a little hoax. But Arnold, the actor, doesn't get what happened in the lines that he's saying. <laughs> and you can see his confusion. It's so fun. It's fucking incredible. She told me you would tell me that I told you. She did? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, puzzle master. Got him. Yeah. So they arrive at work at this helicopter chartering company. And uh, we see... Arnold, he's all excited. The new remote controls have arrived so he oh can my God. control like full-size helicopters like a drone with a joystick that goes on his arm. The dumbest fucking idiot technology. Yeah, like literally, it's like it's like an Atari joystick taped onto his arm. Yeah. It's the future technology. Have you seen the movie The Wizard? It's the Power Glove from <laughs> NES. It is the Power Glove, yeah. But you're controlling a, a deadly, dangerous, massive technology like this helicopters have killed a lot of people like Kobe Bryant you know like th these are sure deadly things and we're to believe that you're just gonna hold a thing that if you wave around then the helicopter just like fucking goes that way like I hope you don't you know adjust your sunglasses on your head because then the fucking the helicopter goes upside down I guess no no just you just everybody. do up up down down left right left right BA select oh, you get 30 30 helicopter lives and you're fine <laughs> <laughs> he sneezes and the helicopter does a flip I'm sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> rude not to do the vampire cough <laughs> Right, so they got some snowboarders in their helicopter chartering little office. I guess they're dropping them, you know, hella, hella skiing, hella snowboarding on top of a mountain. And right before they're about to leave, Arnold's wife calls and she tells him that the vet had to put down their dog. So she wants them to go to Repet. So Schwarzenegger finally agrees to maybe check out Repet. He'll go down to the store and see what it's about. So they, they get done with the snowboarders. They get back to the office. And a rich client, his name is Michael Drucker, has an advance man who's already at their office. And he's there to get Arnold to sign a non-disclosure agreement because mm. he's going to be taking Mr. Drucker on a charter helicopter thing. And he can't tell everyone about the 
amazing like mergers and acquisitions and sports teams that Drucker owns. Right. He has to sign an NDA, give blood and get a vision test is what the movie wants us to believe at this point. Yeah. Only problem with that is like he does the alleged vision test and it's obviously not a vision test. There's no there's no follow up question of like you didn't check if I could see, though. You just like. Oh, no. We scanned your eyes with the weird <laughs> pods on metal poles. It's fine. Yeah, no, you can Really? Because I feel like you just took an imprint of my entire brain somehow. No, for no, no. It was a vision test. Oh, okay. It was Warby Parker. It was fine. You sure? It's like the it's like the <laughs> Clockwork Orange thing, but in reverse. It felt like you took all my stuff. No? <laughs> all right. You could have literally just printed out a sign that had the smaller and smaller letters held it up and been like, read this or something. But no, we had to bring in. It's not very futuristic. Yeah, exactly. Se- yeah. yeah. Seems like something else is going on here. I would be a little bit suspicious if I were them. Yeah. And if I could just spoil this for a little bit, what we will eventually learn is that this apparent vision test and blood test are them preparing to be able to make clones of all the people involved in this ski trip just in case. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. That seems like a lot of effort just every time your boss goes to dinner. Okay, fuck. Sorry. We need we need to get ready to make clones of all the waiters and all the chefs in case someone bombs this place. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. You can't like poor. Uh, the problem is Zondu is too overworked. So he, he's overlooked the fact that you could just be like, well, can't you just say that he survived the, the helicopter crash and the other people didn't make it, that would save you. They even re- reveal it's $1.2 million a pop to clone somebody. Yeah. That would save you, let me do some math, $2.4 million <laughs> from the two people you've cloned. Just say they died in the crash. Done. Where's the Indiana Jones warehouse of unused <laughs> cloning DNA from everywhere this guy's been in the last three years? <laughs> Sorry, this kid really likes to go to the jump around and it's really hard to get a vision scan of all those kids. Wait, he's going to a college football game? Oh, my oh, fucking fuck. God. Oh, okay. God. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Everybody, please put on your... Uh, today at the stadium, we're giving away free vision <laughs> yeah, tests. <I> never... <laughs> like, bring your own bat day. <laughs> right. So, yeah, they fly... <laughs> they fly the rich guy, Mr. Drucker, up to the top of the mountain. He's going to be snowboarding too, I guess. Yeah. But then, out of nowhere, Michael Rappaport appears to be getting murdered by one of the snowboarders from before, but it happens in, like, rewind, fast-forward tape universe. Yeah. Don't worry. That's all going to make sense later in the movie. (laughs) Will it? Yeah. It doesn't. (laughs) I don't think it does. I think they're trying to... There'll be, like, a rewindy tape thing, but it won't make sense for this to happen like it, it's fine. This is yeah. Is that what we're to believe? Like it actually happened in rewindy tape. That's that's actually how it occurred. Right, that's it how they present like- it. it. This this is the real <laughs> present. So it would need yeah. to happen in like you know forward time. It wasn't that when they were viewing it later in the clone right. brain thingy, it looked like that. No, no, that's actually how it happened. Yes. It was a weird rewindy assassination. Right. <laughs> you can't have a memory of you getting killed with you in the frame because you can't see you. It's fine. <laughs> Idiots. Anyway. <laughs> So that happens. Michael Rapport got shot. Now we cut over to Arnold waking up from a nap that mm. he was taking in a cab on the way to the mall. So now he's arriving at the mall to go to the Repet store. And I just want to note, this is definitely the original Arnold Schwarzenegger because, you know, it's just, it's definitely the, the original. He's played by <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. So how could it be? Does part of you feel like they really wanted there to be this big reveal at the end when he's the clone. Oh, so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. They thought this was a twist. Yeah. And I, I want to incorporate in like the idea that, that the guy's like, it's going to be like the sixth sense. Okay. What's the name of your movie? Six. Six. Don't say uh, don't say sense. The sixth. Don't say Johnny Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guys, just a quick tip. If you set up a movie about cloning, we're going to assume that the main characters have clones immediately. Yeah. <laughs> There's no twists for that. You can't twist that. Yeah. Make it even. It's like they should have done it when he was like, do I look different? Like that should have been somehow when we thought it was the clone. Cause now it's too fucking obvious. <laughs> we know he woke up out of nowhere. Why would that happen? Oh, whatever. He wakes up with the Groucho Marx mustache. <laughs> 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 <I look different? laughs> yeah. So he, he goes into the mall and we see. Christians, fundamentalist Christians, 
protesting the repet store because they don't like cloning because God hates cloning. Yeah. And hey, can I just say one of the most realistic moments in the movie yeah. is Christians being mad about a very obviously good thing at the mall. He has a good zinger. Fresh clone Schwarzenegger with a zinger. They're like, God doesn't want you to clone the thing. And he goes, well, then God shouldn't have killed my dog. Yeah. And which is weird because <laughs> a second ago he was against it and thought it was, you know, like well, they can't decide what the fuck his views on cloning are. Yeah. It's different every scene. Very confusing. And they reply, by the way, by calling him an atheist. They're like, atheist! <laughs> I love that. Oh, damn it. That's a good argument. Oh, that means you're an atheist. Fuck. I mean, yeah, he might as well be like, yes, problem of evil. God murdered my dog. I am an atheist. Do you have a response? And they're like, nah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he goes inside the repet store and he learns from the repet salesman guy that they make blanks. Like the, a clone gets created by starting with a blank. So they have a bunch of blank entity beings and then they inject the blank with DNA and it like morphs into a, a dog or a human. So I wasn't clear on this. Is it like you have blank dogs and then blank humans or do they just have blank like animal that can turn into anything? That was my question. Is they have like, Is it a, just like a blob? Well, this here could be a dog or a cat or a snake. This is real. It's a very flexible <laughs> blank. Yeah. <I'm> <laughs> I feel like you would need a blank for every single different kind of dog. You can't, part of the cloning process isn't like you turn a regular dog into a bulldog. That would be impressive. How would you do that? You know, or, or, a, or a corgi, do you chop off its legs? Is that how they do it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Throw it in the corgi chopper and then we, that comes out of corgi when we slice <laughs> off half its legs. Someone comes in, do you have any skunk blanks? Oh guys, we got a skunk weirdo. Come on. <laughs> get out the skunk blank. But yeah, he decides not to get the dog. He's going to get her a Simpal instead. Oh, my God. Right. So he heads to the Simpal store. It's <gasps> where we're about to start screaming. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yep. Oh. Oh. There it is. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So he, he takes the cab home. The cab driver explains how to shut down Simpal <laughs> Cindy, which, which is good. It was very worrying that the cab driver knows how to <laughs> shut down Simpal Cindy. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and also, why do they give... Why would they give the demon power down voice to this terrifying dog. That's yes. what I wrote. <laughs> I, I wrote, maybe you want a voice that doesn't actually die as you shut it. <laughs> oh, sure. No, oh, I am sure. in terrible pain. Oh. <laughs> Why would you have that? Yeah, that's literally just its normal turnoff function. Like if you have to fucking update the firmware, you're like, <laughs> oh, let me restart it. No, 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 no. It like spins around. Imagine howling. It is too horrible. Okay, Sim Pal, Cindy, just oh. to restart it like five times for the update. God, not a guy. All right, hit restart. He says it has to do it again. Fuck. No. Yeah. There's no way. This is impossible that this was made. Ridiculous. This, kid, this movie is impossible. <laughs> so Arnold finally gets home, and this is where the plot really kicks in. He gets home and He's practicing a speech to tell his daughter about how like, all right, we're not going to clone Oliver the dog. Dogs die sometimes. Here's how it goes. And then he sees his dog in the yard and he's like, oh shit, did my wife get a repet already? And then he looks inside and everybody's singing happy birthday to him inside his house at his party. So there's a clone of him, like we all knew right away when the main character's in a movie about cloning. <laughs> and then immediately after he sees that, some evil agent people who seem to be cops at this moment come up and they're like, you need to come with us. There was a human cloned. And then they they taser him and they're going to drag him to their evil truck and take him away. And Simpal Cindy takes a bullet for him here, which was uh, not the character arc I expected for Simpal Cindy, but okay. Oh. Best thing to happen. And my notes were like, oh, thank fucking Christ. They killed the doll. And then it keeps talking again. And I went, ah, no, it's not left. And I typed another fucking spasm into the, God. She might as well look up at the killers and be like, that which does not live can never die. <laughs> I also just want to throw out, they shoot some pal Cindy here and she screams. I think it's strange that they programmed a scream if you get shot in the head into the sim pal Cindy doll. <laughs> Yeah, so he's in a laser gun fight. All the guns, by the way, are lasers in this future universe. Yes, question about that. Um, why? Why wouldn't it at least some of the guns just be still bullet guns? It feels like... Why? Yes. Great question. Like, we have laser guns now, right? That's a thing. We also have bullet guns. Are laser guns real? 
you also might be thinking to yourself, oh, it's probably because they don't run out of bullets. No, they do appear to be six to eight shooters still. So. <laughs> yeah, we watched them refill a, a magazine of like of lasers. lasers. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's where all the light is. Yeah. She's got a bandolier of lasers over <laughs> her shoulder. But there's a bad 2000s car chase and he gets away. Yeah, right. He 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 jumps into his old Cadillac and they they chase him for a while and he drives off a cliff. Yeah. But then he he gra he he dove out of the car at the last minute and he's hanging on a loose piece of fence over the cliff. And then they they try to shoot him and he dives into the the gorge. And just end it there. Like just have him have survived by hanging onto the fence. Why do they do the thing where like, wait, we found you on the fence. Now we're going to try to shoot you and you have to dive unnecessarily into the water and then that's how you'll get away and not be dead. That's <laughs> fucking dumb. Also, he's really good. I love this is another thing. In addition to us forgetting that he's Australian <laughs> somehow all the time, we also just assume that whatever movie Arnold's in, whatever job, quote unquote, he's in in the movie, he's also just a deadly assassin every time. Like it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. Later on in this movie, this movie will constantly be patting its pockets for its keys. <laughs> Later on in this movie, in the sloppiest possible way, like 30 seconds before the end, they'll be like, just like when you were in the war, our movie makes sense. <laughs> yeah. The rainforest war is what they say. <laughs> yeah, remember the fucking think of a thing, rainforest wars of... 2032. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> of the near future. Nearer future, but not quite so near. Future pa past for us. Past for us. Our past, but your future. No, wait, I'm in the mood. Our past. <laughs> so, so yeah, Arnold dives over the side, whatever. Uh, turns out he's going to be alive because he's the main character, obviously. He's fine. He falls for like 45 seconds into a gorge, but he's fine. Now we cut over to the Weir Organ Transplant Facility. <sighs> and a bunch of Christians are again doing a protest because they're cloning organs, which is like the most ethical, obvious thing. Yes, you obviously should clone organs yes. if you can clone organs. Right. And I have a question about movies in general. Is there a reason why all sci-fi writers assume that the biggest thing about the future is going to be holograms that shout at you <laughs> as you walk by businesses? <laughs> Has anybody ever wanted that? Because the outside the clinic, it's got the doctor guy played by Robert Duvall just being like, hello, welcome to the clinic. I'm a hologram. <laughs> like, why is that better than a sign? <laughs> yes. I also think what they should have done is just have the holograms terrorize the stupid Christian protesters the whole time. Like, come up with... <laughs> different weird shit to like throw at them to scare them off. <laughs> All of a sudden it's a hologram of Sim Pal Cindy. Your God is dead. <laughs> oh, oh God. God. Right. We're leaving. We're leaving. <laughs> Run. Ah! And this is where we meet rich guy from before the one who was in the helicopter where Michael Rappaport got killed. So rich guy is going to come out and he's going to give a bad guy speech to the press. And it's so good because they're like, well, all these protesters are very mad at you. Do you want to clone people? And he's like, Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he he makes really good points. He's like, yeah, so imagine, you know, a 10-year-old boy dying of liver cancer. Well, we fixed that. We clone livers here. You're protesting that already. Yeah. But now imagine a kid with brain cancer. And we can't clone just a brain. What if we have to clone mm. a whole person to get the brain? Shouldn't we do that? And I don't, should we? I don't... How does the scene awkwardly walks away from yeah. itself? <laughs> <laughs> also, if we clone a whole person to use the brain, we're not killing that clone now. Like the brain is the part that would be alive the most and it that lives on, right? Well, there's two very different technologies that the movie has decided is one thing. It's one thing to clone something. Like when you clone the sheep, they didn't do an eye test of the sheep and like upload the other sheep into right. it. Dolly's memories didn't go into the <laughs> yeah. clone. They just grew a sheep that was genetically like a twin to the other sheep. And so I, I don't know if the real world knows about this unbelievable brain copying technology that would be earth shattering technology. Like, so does the world know about that? Is that a secret technology? Because that's also not necessarily cloning. Like, is that illegal? It is part of repet. So they're at least peripherally aware oh, that's right. that you can transfer pet memories. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But couldn't you treat it like an organ transplant, but the brain is the organ? Like you're saying, that's what I'm saying. you just grow a brain 
imprint the mem. Is it the imprinting that they're saying is illegal? I don't fucking know, man. I don't know. Like real life, it's unclear what these Christians are upset about <laughs> besides progress. They don't really know either. Yeah, they're just they're generally mad uh, about science somehow. We also learn very quickly that Robert Duvall's wife, Robert Duvall is Doctor Weir, who does the clone of organ thing. His wife is not feeling well, so she has to leave. Yeah. She's got, you know, movie Dying lady something. movie <laughs> syndrome. <Yeah. laughs> Clonitis? <laughs> yeah. Futurama fans will like that one. Yeah, so just very clearly she's going to get, like, murdered and cloned several times. Obviously, that's what they're setting up here. We also meet a senator or, a sp oh, no, the Speaker of the House, and Drucker meets with the Speaker, and they're going to work on getting clone laws changed so you can clone things. Right. Do you feel bad for... Robert, I always feel bad when there's one actual actor in a film. I was thinking about that. Yeah, you always wonder yeah. who Robert Duvall was doing a favor for, right? Yeah. Because there's no way Robert Duvall read this script and was like, this looks fucking great. I want to be in that <laughs> one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I just, I want to know, I would love to like get the debrief from Robert Duvall after each day of shooting where he's like, all right, I'm going to do this thing called fucking acting for real, like actual acting. Everybody else is doing God knows what. Like, I just don't know what they're doing. I would love to just, you know, yeah, let's, let's have a glass of wine, Robert Duvall. Tell me about your day. <laughs> How was this being the one person who could do the job that all these people were supposed to be able to do? You're now allowed to imagine a scenario where Michael Rappaport and Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> were on either side of Robert Duvall and Robert Duvall yeah. did not have a gun to defend himself. <laughs> Yeah, God. It's, it's like Michael Caine doing Jaws the Revenge or whatever. <laughs> it's just <laughs> furious acting the whole time. I'm making $8 million. Okay, cut. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> from there, we, uh, we, we learn about the, the Speaker of the House wanting to make new laws about cloning because he's got a kid with <laughs> terminal brain cancer, it turns out. Then we cut to Arnold pulling himself out of the river. He's fine. And he goes to the cops to report the whole... I have a clone situation, but yeah. the clone already filed a report about the incident at the house with the stolen car and the laser gun shots that they heard outside. So the cops don't, don't believe him about the cloning thing. Yeah, I feel like they have a firm like, look, we don't take sides in Clone Wars. It's just whoever got here first is the not. Yeah. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> Yeah, we also get a virtual public defender oh, popping God. up and a virtual psychiatrist popping up. That's a technology we have. I like these. Uh, I like the attorney, but hey, if I'm going to portray a psychiatrist, how would I portray somebody as a psychiatrist? It's a fucking hacky as shit. German accent, talk about your mom. Yep. God, fuck you. <laughs> It's back in 2000, man. There were three people in therapy and two of them were Woody Allen. It was a better time. <laughs> So, so they're like, yeah, all right, man, we'll, we'll file your report too. just go wait in that, uh, the waiting room over there. And they lock him in. Like it's really a holding room at the police station. Then we cut back to Dr. Weir's lab and we see them. They're totally cloning entire humans. We see his whole like setup. Yeah. Well, they're cloning new henchmen because he killed the henchmen during the car chase. Yeah. My question is, so this is, uh, by the way, if you want to pause for side boob, we're at that part. But why, okay, I get cloning the, the girl, you know, she's dead, you gotta reclone her. Why do you keep cloning the worst fucking henchman in the world? Like, one of them is just a jackass. <laughs> yep. A jackass who does nothing. He can't help. He's not good at his job. Why are you blowing your clone money on the worst fucking henchman in the history of time? What does a henchman cost? Way less than 1.2 mil. I feel like you oh, pay him God, like yeah. a month of salary, whatever big salary that might be for henching. God, yeah. It's still, you know, they're going to die within the month because that's what keeps happening. You're saving a lot of money. I mean, what does a henchman actually make? Minimum wage? Like, it's, it can't be much. Yeah. You're going to tell me that he's going to clone a new henchman every time they die. Now, what you would do is... You would tell them that. You'd be like, oh, yeah, if, if you die, I totally got you back. Don't worry. I'll, I'll make a new one of you. And then just not. Then you just put an ad on <laughs> fucking monster.com looking for yeah. henchmen. 18 an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, all we're getting here is just seeing their their process of like turning the blank into a real person. So the, the, the lady hench, the henchwoman is being cloned here. The face turns from the blank face to... The, the person's face in like a few seconds. Very yep. quickly. It's a very yeah, fast very <laughs> turnover it's, on that. It's a reverse Voldemort, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one part of the cloning process is like 
everybody rubs Vaseline on them, I think. Yeah. Didn't it seem like? Everybody come in for a pat down. <laughs> <laughs> they got to grease you up once you've been cloned. It's very important. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like you could give clothes to the blank so that they don't wake up naked and terrified every single time? <laughs> yeah, because that's what they do. It does feel like sexual harassment. Like she should go to Hinch, Hinch Woman HR, though. It'd be like, look, it's kind of inappropriate that, you know, they're cloning me with my naked body and they're all rubbing me like when I wake up. But yeah, listen, I saw a bunch of other the guys get cloned and they had clothes, no Vaseline. It was yeah, just they, nobody was, it was rubbing really them. just yeah. a really easy process for them. It seemed like, by the way, the first thing you do when you get created as a new clone is you yell at the person responsible for your death because you you re remember that because they they zap you with like a viewfinder of all your memories. So I guess the last thing that happened is always your death. So you yell about your killer. Question, in other parts of the movie, they remember the fact that you only go back to your last backup time. But in this part of the movie, are we to believe that they gave her an eye test, right? Right, like as she was dying? Yeah. They eye forgot. Test. They forgot. A post-death eye test, maybe? Yeah, when was her backup point? Do we know? Unclear. Yeah. They were like, oh, she's dying, safe, 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 safe. <laughs> Checkpoint. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's like a From Software game. You, you got to wait one second. I, I know we're going to fight on Schwarzenegger. I just got to run back to this bonfire real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so she's alive. And uh, I am rooting for a cloning lab with a team of murdery agents now. So maybe the movie can sell the protagonist a little better in the next act. We'll find out after a quick break. And then I said, a punch bowl is just a really big cup if you drink it all. Same thing. Yeah, right, man. But it was a funeral. Ah, it's irrelevant. It's, it's it's true either way. I feel like it's not irrelevant, though. Mm. Thomas. Hey, Eli, what's up? Uh, Noah left this for you. It's a, a gift card for Masterclass. What's Masterclass? Yeah, what's Masterclass? Heath Clone, you're not in the show anymore. Get out of the That's ad, That's two man. points. It's two points for Heath Clone. Yes, it is. Two no, points it's for a, you didn't yes, even it say it first, points. Heath Clone. I think, I think that counts as two. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds Anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, improve your chess skills from Gary Kasparov, or learn to skateboard from Tony Hawk. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. And I came back next to the mics for this. I was actually a Masterclass customer before they were a sponsor. I signed up for the Steve Martin class on comedy, but I found a bunch of stuff I've loved since then. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass, and as a God Awful Movies listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash awful now. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off Masterclass. Wow. You know, that was a really nice gift of Noah to... Oh. Never mind. Oh, rough. Yeah. Dear Thomas, maybe try an audio course, Noah. Sorry about that. No, no, it's uh it's fine. I'm I'm used to it by now. Yeah. Yeah. Us too. <laughs> hey pal, where you headed? Uh one, two, three, Maple Lane, please. You got it. My name is Sally. Do you want to be friends? God, how do I turn this thing off? This is the worst. Oh, uh, you just got to say, Sally, go to sleep. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Sally, go to sleep. <laughs> I'm sleepy. Ugh. Yeah, the voice chips on those things can be changed. So you can do one that's a little less shrill if that bothers you. Also, the dress it comes in, that's just the standard one. I like the new modern classic. It's so much easier to wash. Cool. Yeah, good to know. Um, How old's your daughter? Oh, uh... I don't have any kids. You see, the thing about... We don't need to talk anymore. Thank you. Okay. Roll up the window. Mm -hmm. Further. <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, the evil agent team just cloned their dead lady back to life using miraculous technology that's better than God. And now they're coming to the police <laughs> station to find Arnold. And I like that the incompetent henchman always has posts getting murdered by Arnold Schwarzenegger flashbacks <laughs> yeah. that he can't get over. That will be a running theme through the movies. He's like, well, my fucking chest hurts from when he ran over me with a car. <laughs> and they're like, no, it didn't, Larry. Stop. You can't have a paid day off. <laughs> <laughs> but my dog uh, has a thousand tiny dogs. In it. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that too i thought they were getting at like building up to like oh actually the clones for whatever reason won't work like that's what i thought they were building up to like oh exactly they are setting up for the this is why cloning's bad because they actually have all the pain memories in your body but nope no nope. no but just this one guy 
just the one, the worst over fucking paid henchman of all time that they, but a genuine funny move, moment in the movie is when Arnold just fucking in a minute here, just snaps his neck. You know, there, we get a little chasey around the police thingy. Yes. Arnold snaps his head off. And this is actually a genuinely laugh out loud moment of the movie because the other henchmen from, you know, the zombie show, they come over and they have to do the thing of like, no, he's actually fine. He's totally fine. Yes. <laughs> The, uh, the cops walk <laughs> over to his dead body and his neck yeah, is like, very clearly broken. They're like, uh, and he's so like, so he's dead. He reaches down and shuts his pulse and he's like, yep, oh, strong pulse. pulse pump, pump, strong. pump, pump, pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. And it's hilarious, except for the fact that, like, I guess in the future, the police are like, well, he said he was alive. So they could just take a dead body back somewhere and get away with, like, a mer like, they don't, the cops don't need to keep that for evidence or chase, you know, <laughs> collect evidence from the body or whatever. They're just like, well, he said he was alive. So I guess, yeah, we let him go. They're just weekend at burning him back to the car. <laughs> oh, I think I'd like a sandwich. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, chief, do you think we should stop them from doing No, they, he said no, it was no. strong pulse. That's fine. We got to follow up on all these dog virus cases. We don't have time. <laughs> Right, so Arnold saw them coming. He ran out of the police station somehow. He, he blends into the crowd as Arnold yeah, of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> comes up to this guy outside, snaps his neck. He's wearing a jacket, so it's fine. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, he has a, a normal, normal jacket that says normal on it. So he, he snaps that guy's neck and he runs away. Then we cut to Michael Rappaport arriving back at his apartment, but... He got murdered a few scenes ago, so it's a, it's a clone of Michael Rapport, and we know that, but the movie doesn't know that we know that because the movie still thinks they're doing a twist. Yeah, but they did clone him, and that means it's time to meet the virtual oh, girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Which it's, yeah, it's like Thomas said, it's just like a really shitty, like 80s technology hologram that gives you a lap dance in this weird chair that you have. Well, you put the forehead thing on, and then you can feel it. It's so sad. But here's the problem with that is that they say also that she was unzipping them. So I get. Okay. Yeah. He could feel it. So the forehead the, no, I, I get you. You would feel like something's touching your dick. I get that. But the unzip, they specifically say. A hologram <laughs> was, was yeah. she unzipping. So I, I, here's what I have to believe. There's a little arm attachment, like a little <laughs> tiny, like swivel attachment that comes out of the chair just for the purpose of unzipping the zipper. Yeah. And then the little arm turns to the camera and is like, rock, it's a living. I bet it's magnet based because, you know, zippers are metal. <laughs> the zipper metal. Yep. Yeah. That's probably what it is. What if you're wearing sweatpants? No, you have to decide. It only works. You're not with wearing sweatpants. <laughs> there's a there's a sticker on the chair that says only wear, wear yeah. stuff with, metal with, zippers. with zippers. I also <laughs> want to throw out that I just love that how like unbreakable her early 2000s sexism is, right? Because there's a bunch of stuff that happens in this scene and she'll just be like, oh, I noticed that you guys are fighting over the last hologram of Uran Ra. Want me to take my pants off? I'm sorry, guys. I'm a hologram. I don't have a lot of settings for these conversations. Uh, and then, you know, another minor thing, but Arnold takes out the gun and Michael Rappaport goes, that's a real gun. You're like, well, why would that be what you would? <laughs> Someone takes out a gun in front of me. I don't go. That's a real gun. I what F fucking? Weird. And then I think Arnold should have said, "No, it's just a stupid fucking laser bullshit. It doesn't even do anything. It's terrible." That's a real shirt you're wearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a real shirt. It's a real shirt. Honestly, if the rest of this movie had just been them like driving <laughs> while Michael Rappaport lists the real things around them, <laughs> that's a real beer in my fridge. Yeah, exactly. Right, but the whole point of the scene is just for Arnold to be like, hey, so there's a whole cloning situation. You need to be part of the plot. I got cloned. We need to go to my house. And I think his plan is to murder his clone at his house. To murder his clone? Yeah. We have no reason to believe his family is in danger, that the clone is danger. He's just like, that is my house. <laughs> Yeah, and Michael Rapport's like, yeah, let's go murder a clone. That's awesome. Yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> I was hoping, I've been hoping you'd ask me to go murder a clone. Finally. Right. I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> so they're hiding outside of Arnold's house, spying on the clone, and Michael Rapport's like, hold on a second. Oh, God. How do I know you're not the clone, and that's not <laughs> the real Arnold? And I wanted Arnold to be like, because none of the plot would make sense if that's what was happening. Why would I be doing this if I was the clone? But no, it's just... They they use the shaving cut yeah. thing to explain it. So Arnold has a cut on his chin from shaving 
So he knows that's the real one. Oh, that, yeah. Okay. That settles it. Yeah. Never mind the fact that they're able to birth an entire human. So I feel like they could fake a shaving cut. And also, the real Arnie is within view of Michael Rappaport, and you can see his shaving cut. So I feel like maybe Michael Rappaport should have asked a few follow ups on that, you know? Yeah. And, and again, <laughs> just to like spoil the movie here. He is the clone. We've yeah. talked about this. He is the clone. That's the worst possible clone test when the answer is let's murder the other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, sorry. A shaving cut seems like a really bad way whether or not to kill a sentient being. Nope, kill him. Kill it. No, kill that man over there. Yep. All right. I guess we'll kill that man over there. So they decide to kill the man over there. Not before we get 18 more fucking clips of Arnold going to fuck his wife and then getting interrupted. God, it's so many. It's <laughs> yeah. so many. <laughs> oh, and Michael Rappaport is watching for a second, which is supposed to be a comedy beat, but it lasts too long and gets real creepy. Yeah. Right? Because, like, there's definitely the action movie beat of, like, oh, give me a kiss, big boy. And then the sidekick goes, like, <laughs> huggle, eagle, and leaves. <laughs> Except it's like, give me a kiss, big boy. And Michael Rappaport's just like, yeah, fucking do it. <laughs> fucking do it. I'm Michael Rappaport. <laughs> I got a question, though, because can clone Arnold watch? Like, is it okay Ooh. if clone Arnold watches? Yeah, when he failed to kill his clone, I was like, nice, just going to live their life as a thruple. I appreciate this. Yeah. Very progressive of them. Like, what's the crime? I want to know what the crime is if he watches. I'm just curious. I'm, I just want to know. I feel like you would get involved. Right. Why would yeah. I feel like if everybody's into that, that's like a perfect thing. I feel like a lot of people would want that, in fact. Right. I. It depends on your partner. No one wants two of me. <laughs> I, well, if I was, note here, no one wants one of me, let alone two. <laughs> I'm picturing if we were to have a sexual relationship, you and I, Eli, every time we do this podcast, now it could every be every time it could be either that or it could be two of you and one of me. Hmm. Mm. I'm going with two. I did write down here that, okay, number one use of a clone Thomas would be switching off to take care of the kids so I could bone my wife in peace. That would be yep. the number <laughs> one thing that I would do. But the clone is going to want to do the boning, right? That's the problem. That's you got to rochambeau your clone. That's why I said switching off. It's a, you know, double duty. Like one, other, Tuesday, every other Thursday, day. Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday. Says yep. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to cut back over to Robert Duvall's house. His wife is doing more dying lady sighing. Yeah. Then we get back to Michael Rappaport, who again <laughs> is like, oh, I didn't watch you fuck your wife. I, I mean, I didn't watch her smoke the stogie. And then they go back to Michael Rappaport's place to try and figure it out. But the henchmen show up and they kill Michael Rappaport. No, the old assassin. This is my favorite thing. The assassin shows up. The assassin who killed them in the helicopter to begin with. Yes. Shows up and just blasts a hole in Michael Rappaport instantly. Like, and I just, I love it because it feels like the movie was like, we got to get rid of this fucking dillweed. Like, we can't have this guy in the <laughs> film anymore. He just comes in, shoots him. Doesn't shoot Arnold, though, for no reason. No. It's weird. I don't, I don't understand. Well, he later says that he shot him because he's a clone. Mm. So he, he thinks that he's a clone, but because he didn't... He didn't know about Arnold. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But okay. we're we are going to learn, by the way, just for context, that this guy who comes in and kills Michael Rappaport is a Christian terrorist. He's a Christian fundamentalist terrorist, yes. Mm. Yeah, and he will be a good guy in the movie. <laughs> the movie thinks he's a good guy. Yeah, a real heroic fighter, yeah. He, he's not too bright, though. He gets distracted by the, the VR fuckbot <laughs> when he Very runs Very easily. Arnold presses the button and she, like, pops up behind him and says something and he spins around. Well, again, if his, if his whole... I just want to know what his version of this was going to be. Because if in his mind he's just killing Michael Rappaport, he's done. Why is he still there? He should just be like, bam, okay, kill that clone. All right, take care. Sorry about that, Arnold. And then leave out the window. Instead, he like he's not going to kill Arnold, but he is going to point his gun at him. And then when he's distracted by the sex bot, he gets killed by or whatever, wrestled by Arnold. It's weird. Like what? What in his mind, what's happening in the scene? I think his whole point in this scene is just to drop the title of the movie. And that's it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Because he, he explains what's happening, and then he's like, I'm Christian, and on the sixth day, God created man, so I'm a terrorist against clones because of that. And that's <laughs> the title drop. And I mean, honestly, it's 2022. There have been Christian terrorists for way less stupid reasons. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So they do a big garage chase scene. I just want to point out the garage that they do the chase scene with the Christian fundamentalist guy catches fire. 
very quickly. I feel like the future would have more of a handle on fire. Than- <laughs> Especially if all guns are fire creating lasers now. I think yeah. that would be a consideration. Yeah, yeah, Arnold's just shooting steam pipes all over this garage. It's a steam powered <laughs> garage, so he's I don't I don't know. So we can't see most of the scene, but yeah, they have a garage fight laser scene. Yeah, is there a giant bellows in there for like a big <laughs> steam engine? Yep. <laughs> what is does that power the sex bot? Maybe I don't know. Ooh, steam powered sex bot. The yeah, name my rush cover sex. man. <laughs> just shoveling coal into one side. Yeah. So <laughs> this is where we get Eli's best worst, by the way, where Ooh. the leg gets shot off. Yeah. The bad henchmen show up to the chase scene between him and the fundamentalist. And they're like, oh, shit. Sorry. We got to both fight the bad guys now. <laughs> so they both fight the bad guys, which includes Arnold jumping out and shooting Zandu in the leg. Yondu. <laughs> I cannot recommend watching it enough because it is very clearly just this actor Lifting his leg in the air and being like, ah, oh, it's gone. He got, he, like, he doesn't even bend his knee. He's just like, ah, oh, I'm hopping on one leg. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just holding his leg up like it's a quad stretch like that. Like he's, yeah, ah, <laughs> the lower half exactly at my knee is gone. <laughs> also, during this fight, Arnold shoots the fingers off the henchwoman and a few of those fly onto the ground. And that is very important because Arnold jumps in their truck and he needs the biometric ID thing in the truck to work. So he has to run back out, grab her thumb and start up the truck with that. Yeah. Now, he does kill her in this scene, but it did bring up the question for me of in the future where you can just clone new henchmen. At what point do you go like, oh, man, you should probably kill me so we can get a new henchman, right? Because she doesn't have fingers on one hand now. Yeah, yeah. And that feels like a borderline case of like, well, I'm obviously not my peak henchman, but yeah. <laughs> is it a waste of a clone to kill me, right? I don't want to die. That would have been a, a great argument back at headquarters. No, I can still do everything you can do. I can still do, oh, really? Oh, really? Hold, Hey, hold these two guns, one in each <laughs> hand. Hold it. Toss it at her and like hits her in the face. <laughs> Bigot. <laughs> yeah. There's the one guy who just keeps insisting he's fine and doesn't yeah. need to be cloned. Hey, fellas, how's it going? Oh, look, it's Nubby Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> you want some help on this murder? No, we're fine. Can we just clone you a, a shin area? That's it's just it's look, it's fine. Okay. So then we cut over to Robert Duvall again. The coffee wife from before, she's officially on her deathbed. One of the doctors is like, she has cystic fibrosis, but that's a thing for kids, so we must be mistaken. And he's like, Yep. You must be mistaken. And this is where clone wife is like, I don't want to come back. Our argument against cloning is that I personally, this one lady (laughs) would prefer not to come back. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh, it gets worse than that later. I can't wait. Right. But he all he clearly he told his wife that she's a clone. So, yeah, she knows five years ago. I thought they were going to. Okay, this is a cool episode of Black Mirror. If you just take his situation, (laughs) the one good actor, it's interesting. It should be like, she doesn't know. He keeps cloning her without her knowing. But they ruin that because she's like, I've been actually dead for five years and I know all about this. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, that kind of ruins the magic of the scene. Yeah. And by the way, don't clone me anymore. Okay. Don't clone you anymore. And then I better, you know, shut down the entire business and not help any dying children. Yes, no, that's... you can still do that. Exactly. She they, she should should have said that. No, you can still do that. I just, I personally have a preference of don't clone. And Robert Duvall's like, what I'm hearing is and all cloning <laughs> for all, everybody. No cloning for anybody. Yeah, no organ transplants. No right. cloning. You know, don't worry, darling. I'll destroy the world's <laughs> supply of antibiotics for you. Honey, I, no, I, I just personally <laughs> don't want you to clone me. It's okay if you save the children. Go kill all the clones in the world. You got it. I have this button. I've installed an explosive in all the repets. No, that's really not every necessary. Repet. I hear you. Yeah. It's all about the elegant beauty of children dying when God <laughs> wants them to. I heard you. Message received. I'm Robert Duvall. Got it. I'm going to honor you, my dead wife, by killing untold innocent people in Millions your name. of, yeah, literally an infinite number of suffering <laughs> thanks to you. Yep. So that whole scene was to introduce that philosophical principle, and that's it. That's it. That's all that happens there. Now we cut back to Arnold. He's sneaking into the Weir lab using the cutoff thumb to get into mm-hmm. the, the front gate as the biometric ID. So he's going to pop up as the henchwoman on like the security screen, but yeah. yeah, they ignore that. There's a lot of problems with this plan. 
First is that he's decided to use the thumb of a woman to get through all the security. <laughs> Don't worry, it works constantly. Yeah. But also, the way he's decided to smuggle in the gun is to bring it in a cooler. And when the guy's like, I got to check your cooler for him to be like, okay, but there's like super gross flesh-eating bacteria in there. So maybe you don't do your job. You know the disease that's killing literally every dog in the city? Yeah, it's that it's, it's all in there. <laughs> right. So, but that's, yeah, he sneaks in and he's now he has a laser gun in there. And we also learn that life expectancy of these clones is one to five years because the clones have a cancer genome in them. We see Robert Duvall like learning that on his computer. Okay. So again, I was like, okay, this is the plot of the movie because we haven't gotten a good anti-clone argument. It was going to turn out that you actually can't make yeah. clones long-term. They all get these genetic diseases and die. Yep. Nope. That's going to be canceled out in about two scenes. So weird. So fucking weird. This is also where he gives him his like personality DVD that they got from the eye test. <laughs> and I wrote, I'd say that's unrealistic, but I actually really believe that Arnold Schwarzenegger's personality fits on a mini disc. <laughs> on like a five and a quarter floppy. Like it's, yeah. it's yeah, so it's silly. Tiny... That's an entire, every memory and nuance of your brain's understanding yeah. of everything in your life. Takes 19 of those things to play Starship Titanic, but Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> fits on one just fine. <laughs> Yeah, so Arnold takes this, that, that's his evidence of the clone conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And now the evil agent team, they're looking for Arnold's wife and his daughter at the house because Drucker's like, all right, he's got my, he's got my evidence of uh, our conspiracy here. You got to go get his family so we can pressure him and make him trade it back. Yeah. He might as well say, you got to go get his family for act three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's for. And that's where they learn that the little girl is at her recital. Yep. I would also, this was almost my best worst. So they head over to the recital. First of all, I just want to stop for a moment and acknowledge how insane it is to have a scene where the bad guys don't find the wife and child, right? Like we just go to a series of events that the wife and child are in it. No, they're not at the mall or the ice cream shop. <laughs> but yeah, they, they finally go to the recital. They're going to kidnap the little girl and they corner her with their Remote control robo doberman pincers. Yeah, okay. Why? So is this another piece of technology that also exists? Again, another thing that's not really cloning. Like you, cloning entails a lot of stuff in this movie. And apparently part of that is programmable dogs where you have a terrible <laughs> little interface, by the way, that's like the buttons are really close together. Like if yeah, this, it's this, a this fucking was my Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> if this was my phone, I would fuck this up all the time. I can't even type a sentence without the, the letters being all mixed up, but you have like definitely kill the innocent child right next to the don't kill They're the innocent child They're trying to do it in like button. T9 word and it's fucking up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have to pull out a stylus from the back of it. Shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the bad guys who have not had Robo Dobermans the entire movie, no. they have them. And by the way, we'll never have them again. Nope. Right? Oh, we're setting up the Robo Dobermans so that Arnold <laughs> could kill them later. Nope, they will never appear in the movie again. Nope. Don't they have guns? So they, they use the, Do the Dobermans to kidnap the wife and daughter yeah. couldn't they just be like what are the dogs guns? add yes the, what are the dogs add? The, the the problem with them they haven't been able to kidnap the wife and daughter not because they haven't had a scary dog with them it's because they haven't found them yet so when you find them just just get them because you're henchmen with guns that's you don't need the dog which leads us to believe they looked for them in the house and we're like ah they're at the recital you know what if we're gonna go all the way across town let's pick up the robo dogs on the way to help with the fucking <laughs> kidnapping right so they take them away they take they kidnap the the wife and child and put them into a helicopter to fly away and arnold real arnold that we are supposed to believe is clone arnold sees that happening. So here's, I, I wanted to set that up because it is kind of funny because they're watching the recital and they're like, wait a minute, isn't our daughter in this part, I guess? Like she's supposed to be fucking kid dressed as bear number five. I don't know. They know the recital. Right. And then she's like, I'm going to go check just in case, which I love because it implies that Arnold's like, okay, good. I don't want to miss any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch the other kids doing fucking their nothing right now. So thanks, honey. Can you do? It's like he's watching the football game and she's going to like go check on it. So that's why only she is there. 
And then I think eventually Arnold must realize, oh, I'm just a guy watching other people's kids do a dumb fucking thing. This is the worst. I'm going to go check if a crime is happening because that would be more fun. Yeah, that would make more sense. Hopefully my family's being kidnapped so I have a reason to leave. And and yes, they are. Yeah. So he goes, out, he goes outside and he sees this happening just barely. He sees a, a helicopter flying away with his family that just got thrown inside. And he runs back into the building to call the cops. So he calls 911 on a futury like screen Skype phone thing. And he gets... He gets an automated menu, like a really bad yeah. 911 automated menu. I wrote in my notes, in the future, 911 puts you on hold. And I wrote, okay, that's also true. It's okay. Yeah. We're predicting a lot of stuff. They might as well have had the bot be like, hi, you've reached 911. Unfortunately, the woke left has defunded us. <laughs> so I am a robot who can't help you. If you would like James Lindsay doing axe karate to save you instead, <laughs> press one. Speak to a human. Oh my God, this is the worst. <laughs> Operator. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right so this is where real arnold and clone arnold meet up so yeah. the one we believe is the real one is actually the clone he shows up at the school now okay what would you two i want to ask you forget everything you know about this movie what would you say you walk into a room you see clone you what do you say i'm crazy yeah i'd just be like what the fuck what well no i'm in a world of clones clones are everywhere i'd be like oh someone cloned me Hi, someone cloned yeah. us. Yeah. Oh shit, a clone. <laughs> yeah. Instead, he says, "Who the hell are you?" So that's not. That's the one thing you wouldn't say. Like you know, that's you. You're looking at it. It's another you. You don't say like, "Oh, wh who of me is that?" That doesn't make it. We should sense. fuck, right? I feel like that's the move. <laughs> In this movie's universe, this is like walking into a room and finding an iPhone and being like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> Right, but uh, Arnold punches Clone Arnold because he's mad that Clone Arnold... That's who's sleeping with my wife. Sleeping with his wife, yeah. Actually, it's the reverse. We, we it's my wife. Twist learn yeah, at the end. My wife. You know. yeah. That's for not sleeping with my wife. I'm very uh -huh. clear. Sexual jealousy doesn't really work in this <laughs> scenario. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, we're on the same team now. Starting now, we're on the same team. So both Arnold's are team now. It is weird that Arnold is not able to comprehend the fact that like... If you don't know who the clone is, you're agnostic about that. It's both your wife. Like, you can't be mad. You both have the same wife and the same memories. You're the same person. Yeah. yeah. Why are you mad at the other guy for being you? You're you. You're mad at yourself right now. Sexual jealousy doesn't make sense without clones. It especially doesn't <laughs> yeah. make sense with clones. I feel like we just need to team up sexually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'll talk about it later. We have to do the uh, the thing with the bad guy. But yes, yes, team up for sex. Let's move to Portland. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> right. So they call Drucker to set up the big trade. They're going to trade their sin courting memory evidence floppy disk for the wife and daughter. At 10 o'clock that night. Yeah. What are they going to do until that? Sorry, we were going to catch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to see what my back looked like. I've always been really curious. <laughs> but we'll see you at like 9.30, They're 10. doing the three-course menu at TGI Fridays. I want... Oh, okay, we have to do that. 10.30. 10.30. Definitely going to whack each other off a few times just to see. <laughs> How's your Sunday looking? <laughs> Oh, I got to catch Johnny Phoenix playing tonight. So. Mm, I play fantasy football. Sunday is uh, one shot. <laughs> Monday? So they cut over to the helicopter place where they're making bombs. Again, there will later be a single line about him being in the rainforest war. So this is yeah. just a helicopter pilot who knows how to make bombs, apparently. Uh, or it's is it ther I thought it was bombs. It's thermite, though, right? They're, they're mixing up thermite? Yeah, that was a great weapon in the rainforest wars of 20 out fucking 45 or whatever. You remember when we burned down that rainforest with the thermite? <laughs> <laughs> Straight top to bottom. Here's the thing. It's thermite in this scene. And I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's thermite. I get it. It will actually be a bomb in the movie, though. I think it just melts the oxygen tanks and the oxygen tanks are the bomb, right? Oh. Uh, oxygen doesn't melt that hot. But we get <laughs> yeah, steel oxygen tanks. George don't Bush know. is just behind him taking notes about his thermite. <laughs> I need this for uh, the not so near future, if you know what I mean. This movie yeah. came out in the year two thousand. <laughs> God, you're right. And this is where we get again one Arnold acting in a scene with normal people. You can almost pull it off. You can almost be like, oh yeah, that's a guess a human. Two Arnolds Arnolding together is a singularity of ten. Like it's just it's yeah. It's unbelievable. It's so funny. <laughs> Have you ever put like a pair of sneakers in a dryer 
That's what this scene sounds like. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> You're not using enough aluminum. <laughs> Yes, I am using enough aluminum. No, you're not. <laughs> you're like, fucking God. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? I wonder if they had to protect Arnold from seeing himself act. What if Arnold was like, oh, so you're going to show me the screen where I did the other take? No, we'll have a stand-in do it. I, I don't think you want to <laughs> no. see. No, show me my line. Nah. Honestly, if you told me Arnold was is forbidden from seeing his dailies, <laughs> it makes a lot more sense about his cinematic career. <laughs> right, so the whole thing there is they're setting up a thermite device to melt down the entire we'll cloning we'll lab. never matter. Maybe? We'll never no, matter. No, okay, uh, sorry to ruin your fun. But they did specifically do a camera shot of the oxygen tanks. And it was Arnold like, ah, I'll remember that for later so I can thermite the oxygen tanks. Like he I kinda... was watching this movie on like seven times speed at that <laughs> point. <laughs> okay. Fair, fair. But yes, I think the idea is that they're going to they're gonna go melt down the cloning factory thing. Yes. So now we cut back to that lab. And Dr. Weir, Robert Duvall, is yelling at Drucker because... His wife died and he, he's finding out, he realized that Drucker somehow was sneaking the cancer DNA into the blank is, clone uh, bodies and he used oh one of those God. to make his wife. So his wife got cystic fibrosis, <laughs> even though it's a kid disease. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. So not only that, the, the evil doctor that's like, you know, Steve Jobs or whatever, that guy, he, it's not just that he put a fail safe of like, oh yeah, it, you know, in five years, one of the genes will fucking explode or some shit. He gave them like a potpourri of different diseases for <laughs> just for fun. I yep. guess. Yeah, that <laughs> one will get fucking ball cancer. That one's liver is just going to blow up like it'll just. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that. And it's even funnier because the whole tragedy of the one good actor in this film, Robert Duvall, is the thing with his wife. You know, she's got the disease. And again, it would have made so much more sense if the whole thing was like, yeah, you can't actually clone people. Doesn't work for whatever, for any reason. Pick a reason. Oh, the copying process. It gives them disease, whatever. Exactly. Instead, what happened was this, the evil guy accidentally made a boo-boo when cloning his best friend's wife. Accidentally gave her a disease. Meanwhile, Arnold will find out later, no disease. No disease. No disease. <laughs> So it's not like a every clone has a disease problem. It's almost like he was like, God, I fucking hate this guy's wife. I'm going to, oh, oops, press the fucking fi cystic fibrosis <laughs> button while cloning your wife. It's a planned obsolescence thing, like a fucking iPhone, right? How they like speed them up and put too much stuff <laughs> on it so you can't, you gotta upgrade eventually. Yeah. That's what he's done with cloning. Again, it's not a problem with cloning. So cloning is still a good and moral thing to do. Totally fine. It's just he updated the iOS on his wife too early and now she's all fucked up. I don't think DNA has a fuse for cancer like that, though. I don't no. think it's like five year <laughs> cancer fuse because you have a certain strand of DNA. In oh, you. so funny. But yeah, that's when Robert Duvall is like, well, I'm not going to bring her back and I'm not going to bring anyone back yeah. ever again. And Drucker's like, why? That's insane. You you're an insane person. So yeah, okay. You're why fine. I'll go with you on your wife has a personal preference not to be a clone. So we fuck all the kids that are dying of brain cancer, right? Just yes, fuck them. I'm Just Robert fuck the kids. <laughs> Also, it doesn't. I mean, like you can quit if you like. We have the facility now. You, it's invented and going. Yeah. You, you don't. You you just like stand next to it now. Yeah. Retire. Go to do what Obama did. Go sit parasail with uh, the virgin virgin guy. Right. That guy. And then evil rich guy makes an amazing point. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to kill you and your wife and clone both of you without the memory of the last few days. So you're happy and you're back. Yep. I have in my notes. Oh, the bad guy is right here. He does a perfect <laughs> thing yeah, he does. where he says, okay, you know what's happened here is your wife discovered she's a clone and a sick clone. And by the way, it's perfectly rational to think, hey, maybe what's influencing her thinking is that she accidentally got a horrible disease and died. And that apparently is not mandatory. <laughs> like you could just be a totally healthy clone. Yeah. Hey, here's what we're going to do, Robert Duvall. I'm going to kill you, reset you back to before we had this conversation, reset your wife back to before she knew she had a horrible disease. And then we'll all be happy and our decades long friendship will be preserved to which Robert Duvall says, fuck you, defiance of God. No question mark for some reason? Yeah. <laughs> what? No idea. 
What really should have happened was Robert Duvall realized that this could happen and he should have been dropping hints to the guy so that's not his fault. Like, ah, man, uh, I'm definitely, I promised my wife, current me now, by the way, has a memory of promising my wife, wink, wink, that I would (laughs) never bring her back. And I, right now, with my memories, right, oh, what's that? That's a backup of me from before I had this memory, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's sitting on your desk right there. Yeah, I don't know why I I put that there. Anyway, current me promised my wife that I can't copy her again. Like, you would, that's what you would do. You would would want your friend to do this to you, right? Yeah, of course. It's ethically fine. You, you, You didn't do it. Absolutely. No, it's ethically required to do this. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. 100%. (laughs) All right. We're all decided. All right. Yeah. Team cloning. 100% team bad guy cloning. They're the good guys. We're going to take one more quick break and then we'll be back with, I guess the movie has one more chance to sell us the good guys. They won't. (laughs) Hi, Mr. Swanson. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Hi. Yeah. I'm so sorry to hear of your loss, but here at Rewife, we'll have your beautiful wife back in your arms in no time. God, I want nothing more in the world. Great, great. Now, before we get started, are there any um, changes you'd like to make? No, God, no. Just, just my beautiful Donna back in my arms alive again. Really? Just not at all? Like, just exactly the same? No, nothing she ever complained about that she might like to wake up to being different? Something like that? Maybe, but if she would want, I, I, I know she's perfect and I, I, gosh, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, just to be clear, we're a genetic modification facility. We can make any changes to your wife that you'd like. I mean, we can even make it like she was always like that. Wait, so, so she wouldn't know I made any changes. No, she would not. Okay. I'm going to need about a half hour to, yeah, uh, to yeah, write, yeah. go ahead and take out. your time with that right out of the list. Okay. Uh, I'll be yeah. back in a little bit. Is uh, do you know if foot stuff is one word or is that two? Two words, words foot stuff. Yeah, two words. Just okay. there, we actually have a checkbox. We have a checkbox for that. Oh, per, oh, I see it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but because I'm genetically identical to Heath, technically I am Heath. Like philosophically, that's a great point. Actually, I think you are. We are. Dude, they've been at this for hours. I know. I know they have. Thank goodness I have my Raycon wireless earbuds. Wait. What are Raycon? God damn it. That doesn't count. We were distracted. Exactly. Yes, we were distracted. That doesn't count. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how much you shake things up, literally, no matter how much you shake, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Okay, anyway, back to our argument. This is very important. There is also an uh, awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings so you can take Raycons with you wherever you go. Like in case I wanted to hear this? Exactly, if you wanted to hear this. Uh, I wear the Raycons they sent me when I work out, when I jog, and they don't budge. It's the best. How's the battery life? Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. And they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. If you look at this PowerPoint on the purpose of the point system, yes, please do. I think we should look at that PowerPoint. The, the purpose and of the point system is important. Right now, Just, God Awful yeah, Movies okay. listeners get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash cam. That's buyraycon.com slash cam to save 15% on Raycons, buyraycon.com slash cam. All right, Eli, those headphones are great. I still don't know how we're going to get rid of this clone Heath, though. Ah, don't worry about it. He's only got one PS5 controller, and they usually end up fighting to the death over it. Yeah, that's true. We do. We do. I'm totally going to murder you. Not if I murder you first for the PS5. Told you. You want to make out? <laughs> and we're back. And now it's time for the big trade. But Arnold was ready for a ruse by the bad guys. So he has a ruse of his own. He's hovering a helicopter over his helipad at his office with his remote control thing. And he's definitely in the helicopter, right? Because you need to be in it to fly it, right? You have to be in it. If only there had been some kind of helicopter-based foreshadowing to yeah, early. Chekhov's power glove. <laughs> Chekhov's power glove comes into play here. I love how much this implies that the henchman and the bad guy, how little they think of Arnold Schwarzenegger's mental acuity here, where they're like, well, definitely he wouldn't have any other plan but to hover right in front of us <laughs> with the helicopter and, by the way, the disc that is the entire blackmail material. So we'll shoot it right now because that could only, he's that dumb. Like, there, there's no way he has any other plan. Yeah. 
So their entire plan was just like, okay, step out of their car and shoot the helicopter shoot. with lasers. <laughs> yeah, like, it falls. What? It explodes. <laughs> it's a file. Like we know in this world that it's a file that his black man, he could have just copied it or emailed it to somebody. Like, <laughs> No, nah, he's holding the file. It's in his hand. We'll shoot it, the whole thing and blow it up with lasers. <laughs> so that's what they do. Yeah. But he wasn't inside. No. Okay. But the plan from Arnold's side is super dumb too. He just, that was a big waste of a helicopter to prove the bad guys were the bad guys. Or what if they had said yes? What if he'd been in the helicopter and he'd been like, give me my family and they'd open the door and his family was there and be like, oh, wait, oh shit, I'm at your office. Um, I did a bluff. Give, it's, give it's me 20 out. minutes to catch an Uber. <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> Don't shoot my helicopter down while I'm there. Doing the dessert menu at Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they shoot the thing down. He wasn't inside. And they call the big boss, Drucker, to be like, we didn't get the syncording evidence memory thing. Yeah, he's not quite as dumb as we thought. <laughs> we need to have a different finale. He's not as dumb as we thought. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't fall for that box held up by a <laughs> stick with his family that we put underneath it. So he's probably at your building. Right. Yeah. So Arnold's plan is he flies to Drucker's building and lands his helicopter on the roof and then pretends to be the pilot taxi driver on his way down to pick up Drucker for something. So the security guard's like, yeah, 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 go ahead. And he walks into the building. Right. So he gets into Drucker's office and this is the time for their big face off. Yeah. This is where the Drucker shows him that he's got his family kidnapped in a conference room. Yeah. And I just love the image of them like with hoods over their heads being escorted <laughs> into conference room B. And like there's already a meeting going on in there. And it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. We had this space for a kidnapping. <laughs> well, well, we're just wrapping up here. Right. But we have the space. It's on the, the Google it's, calendar. It's, on the, it's, it's in, on the thing outside. This is the West Room. It's we have the it's it's an asset within Outlook. And we have booked <laughs> that. Follow the fucking rules, please. We're doing a kidnapping. We need this room. <laughs> we're doing a kid. We can't do a kidnapping in one of the breakout rooms. It's Tell you what, can we do the meeting around you? They don't have to do anything other than sit there with hoods on their heads. We'll, we'll do the meeting around them. We already have uh, Japan <laughs> on the line. We got to get that, that office in. Just do the whole thing around them. <laughs> Pay no attention to the woman. Child to the kidnapped children in the corner. That's, I'm really we're sorry doing about a this. Skit. <laughs> Double booking. Worry about situation. it. Business, business. Right, but he he confronts him. He's like, I've got your family. And he's like, oh, well, I have the disc. Or maybe yeah. I, I gave it to... No, he gave it to his clone. Yes, yes. And I love this line. This is the best. This is classic gaslighting fucking thing. The, guy, the bad guy says, looks like we both went back on our word. Like, yeah, but the order of it kind of matters here. Like, I showed up <laughs> with a helicopter and you gunned it down instantly. So now, <laughs> yes, I am going back on my word now. Like, I... Now I didn't bring the thing to you, but like you did that first. Do you understand? Like, yeah, I actually blew up. I had my helicopter get blown up to prove that you're the bad guy. It's, it's <laughs> it was obvious, but like I proved it. You're you did it. You're bad for sure. Uh, yeah. But this is where the bad guy reveals that he's the clone. They they re reproduced his his shaving scar, and again, this is where they explain the thermite and the scar from your war wound. Yeah, you know from war. earlier. <laughs> Your tree-related scar from the rainforest <laughs> wars. Yeah. From the rainforest war. But, okay, hold on. How does the bad guy know he's talking to the clone instantly? There's no way he would know that. But he's just like confidently, yeah, you're the clone. Why? I don't fucking know. It just, you're the clone. I don't know. Right. This is also where we learn that they mark their clones on their eyelid? Yes. Like, generationally? And so, he, te he tells, <laughs> asks the girl, the side boob girl, hey, uh, how many times have you been cloned? I've lost count. And then that's I was like, okay, fine, sure. And then one second later, he goes, show him, show him your markings. On uh, How many times you've been cloned? Show him his eye. Four. Four. <laughs> right. You, uh... you lost count at four, you're saying. You can't four? <laughs> I really want a dumb henchman to pull his eye down and she's got like 600 dots on it. I actually have, I have to do both eyes and spread my butt cheeks. A scroll comes out. He's Michael B. Jordan in uh, fucking yeah. Black Panther. <laughs> He's just yeah. got all those fucking marks all over him. <laughs> four, though. She can't. She lost count at four. I feel like I could keep track of dying four times. Now, if it was 40, yeah, might lose track. Yeah. Four. Okay. And we also get another philosophy speech where the bad guy wins. Yep. 
Bad guys are undefeated in this movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's like, yeah, I'm conquering death. You get that, right? Like, we could still have Mozart and MLK. And <laughs> Arnold's like, no, God decides. You have to let God decide. <laughs> Arnold's literal response to Martin Luther King could still be alive is, you should clone yourself so you can fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is my best verse. He actually says that. Yeah. That's the big finisher line. Right after he said, no, God intended to murder Martin Luther King, I'm right. <laughs> he, he ends that with a big closer mic drop line of like, you should clone yourself so you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. One, amazing line. Yes. Two, would you guys want to fuck yourself? Would you like in like reality, if you could clone yourself, would you want to have sex with yourself a clone? Well, this this is a very obvious. My answer is no. Thomas's answer should be yes. Your answer <laughs> is yes, but should be no. We represent the perfect. OK, range I, I'd of like answers. it's that's you're correct, but I would like us to have thought it through. It's fine. That's fine. Look, you're you're wording it wrong. Would I want to fuck myself? No, I don't want to. But like, what what are my options here? What you know, like, am I by myself on a Friday night and it's just me and my clone? Let's say you let's say you somebody gets you a Groupon for a clone. You don't have to pay the one point <laughs> two million. You just have it if you want. I'm still would rather have sex with you know my wife than me. But like I'm Both? saying, but say she leaves for the weekend. You know, sure. I'm like okay, she's gone. Well, I, you know, it, do I want to masturbate? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd rather. You know, like, like that's the answer for me. It's the same as masturbating. Great questions. Yes. So like a Dutch rudder thing. <laughs> I think I do a Dutch rudder with him. Yeah. You get into that. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, uh, but that's where you. That's where you're doing. You're doing the hand on them. They're doing the hand on you. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, duh. That's absolutely... Of all the hells that I've imagined for you to experience, Heath, being in a relationship with yourself is the cruelest Right, one. but what, which you're moving his arm so that he's his hand is on you, but you're doing the arm motion. All I want in my life is to see clone Heath not answering a text from regular yeah, from Heath. From regular Heath. <laughs> Right, just uh, regular Heath is comes like, in. Hey, um, I was thinking maybe we could. I uh, thought we were gonna jack each other off today, but you didn't answer back with a text. And the other Heath is like, "Yeah, no, my not answering was me saying yes." Yeah, and then Clone Heath like, "That's insane. How would I know that you not answering me would be you saying no. yes?" Clone let's jack Heath each other would be off. like, "This makes perfect sense. Let's do the <laughs> masturbation thing now. Yeah, that's, no, that's awesome. We understand true. each other. Why would we waste all that time on?" weird little texts we could just you know assume that we're all fine and we want to have sex a lot i like that our the sixth day review has devolved into heat saying when you think about it people telling me to fuck myself is a compliment i love me uh. <laughs> so, okay can we get to the part where they try to put arnold's head back into the fucking they take arnold to their torture area that has the eyeball memory machine and they're gonna like shove him into it here. But the two actors <laughs> are nowhere close to the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you see them pushing Arnold's head. Absolutely nothing happened. Nothing and for them to be like, Arnold, you need to pretend we're strong enough to move. <laughs> Unironically, my favorite part. I like to believe that the script actually says they shove him into the thing. And then when shooting, I was like, I barely try. You can, there's no way <laughs> these two people would be able to put my head in the thing. So we got to find a way to do a different thing. like, And it's true. Like, there's no fucking way they're going to shove Arnold. He uses one of his back muscles, and it's more than both these people's entire strength but combined. Because <laughs> they're people. Right? The, the biggest mistake Arnold Schwarzenegger movies ever make is showing Arnold Schwarzenegger in relation to an actual human being. Yeah. And so she, this normal-sized human being puts her hand against his head, and it's like putting it against a brick wall. She's like, eh. And he's like, yeah. diablo. And they express genuine frustration, like fucking God, uh, get, uh, get, put the head in the, uh, I choose to believe that wasn't acting. Yeah. I know Terry Crews isn't in this scene. Can we get Terry Crews in this scene? I feel yeah. like he that, probably... that would have helped a little bit at least. Yeah. But so the whole point is they, they have to put him in this thing to get his memories. And then they're going to look at that DVD of the memories to find out where he hid the other memory evidence disc thing of the big boss guy. And we watch. We watch them watch the memories that they get. And apparently uh, in this universe, they watch, they watch the memories in the movie. They watch the memories in the yeah. movie <laughs> and memories have like a three camera setup. We learn. Oh yeah. yeah. Memories are 4k HDR fully. 
Because like it matters that they're doing like they basically do his memories and they do like enhance, enhance. And they see like, <laughs> oh, in, even though he tried to fake us out by saying other Arnold was going to hide the recording, he actually snuck back on the helicopter. And the way we know is, I guess in Arnold's mind, he has a perfect 4K HD memory of the reflection of, the of reflection. himself. <laughs> like, look, I, is this just me or everyone? Like, I don't know about you guys. My brain doesn't keep a detailed digital recording of everything I've seen. It just doesn't. Like I don't I, make mental notes of no. little reflections that would fuck up the plot that I'm working on to <laughs> yeah. foil bad guys. In my brain somewhere would be like, you fooled them. It would right. be like a memory in my brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they'd be like, why does it say you fooled them in, in his brain? Just in block oh, must letters. Have fooled us. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, like, <laughs> that's how my memory works. It'd be like, you got him. <laughs> I remember that I did that. <laughs> right. So they they notice as they're watching through this that oh it's both Arnold's in the helicopter. They're both in the building. And <laughs> he he calls his security guy, big boss. He's like, Okay, remember when I told you to put out a security warning for a guy who looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do that again. Continue we need to more. also be on the lookout for <laughs> well, the same guy. But Double. there's two <laughs> more. There's one more still. Yeah. So meanwhile, other Arnold, and I'm not keeping track of who's the clone and who's the real yeah, Arnold. It doesn't matter. Other Arnold is rescuing his family. Yep. He's interrupting the conference call. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. 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 Pretend I'm not here. It's okay. Yeah, no, the sales numbers are up this quarter. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So it's, it's fine. I'm just taking these hooded people out. Just going to take this wife and daughter. And they have this fucking amazing moment. They get out into the helipad and he's like, <laughs> now look. I don't want my child to have to see any violence. So you guys just let us go. And they're like, <laughs> did he turn into Borat there? For yeah, he did a little Borat. <laughs> he turned, okay, he turned and they're Borat. like, okay, yeah. My, wife. Just, my wife. My wife. My wife. <laughs> I don't want my wife to see any violence. But <laughs> and, they, and they just let him go. And at this point, like the movie didn't have a purpose anymore. <laughs> right. So that the real Arnold and his family had escaped. I, and my notes at this point are just, what's the other clone going to do? Just fucking <laughs> hang out? Yeah. I think it's a diabolical move by real Arnold to like let him believe he's, let the other guy believe he's real Arnold. And so that it matters that he gets out as well. And then the last minute he should be like, eh, clone Arnold is fucked in there. He should just blow himself up. And then end of movie. That would have been diabolical. That's what I thought was, I actually thought was going to happen is that clone Arnold was going to be like, I'm not the real Arnold. Boom. But no, we're going to spend another 10 minutes of this movie hoping that Clone Arnold makes it out as well. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah. So he shoots bad guy. And then we have this painfully slow series where bad guy is going to transfer himself to a new body. But because real Arnold has set up the thermite on the oxygen tanks and was also around the water tanks, the clone is only going to come out like underbaked, like oh, making yourself impatient cookies. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and Arnold starts swimming around in the pool of yeah, the blanks. Weird. Full, by the way, didn't even take off his jacket. Like, wouldn't you take off your bomber jacket if you're going to jump in clone water? Like, wouldn't that weigh you down? Yeah. He does a thing where he steals an oxygen tube. And I love it because Arnold is just incapable of communicating as an actor. So he he tries to communicate like I'm out of breath, like underwater by going like like his mouth, you know, <laughs> and then he gets an oxygen tube. He sucks in the oxygen and then he does an act, a, a face acty thing as though like that's like shit oxygen, like that's fart that oxygen. It, yeah, I <laughs> did say, is that a yucky flavored oxygen? <laughs> yeah, and I, I, so I was like, did he, is that the wrong, is he going to die? Was it the wrong tube? No, nope, just that's what his acting choice for that, I guess. I don't know. So there was like an umbilical cord that goes to the blanks that are in. Why are they in water? Why? Okay. I, same note. Okay. Great. They're question. in water, but they're in sealed bags that are in water. What is the function of the water? Freshness. In, but they're in a bag though. I feel like it would be oil then. And they don't breathe. Why the oxygen? I don't understand. They breathe. I have whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then as if this movie's ending wasn't confusing enough, Arnold lands hails a taxi, real Arnold, lands with his family, <laughs> hails a taxi, and heads back to the, the bad guy area to save his clone. Clone him, yeah. 
That's pretty hard. I, yeah. Wouldn't you just be like, well, that problem solved. God, this is a perfect ending. We're fine. Real me is with my family. Other clone is fucked. Great. End of story. Credits. Yeah. But we have to have this ending. So 84% done bad guy. Looks like a Gringotts goblin for some reason. <laughs> he also shoots the computers with all the backups here because yeah. apparently in the future, there's no Wi-Fi or <laughs> Amazon web services. They did not predict the cloud this movie. They didn't get you know, that they one. They sure did not. I wanted to see the like Gringotts, like the wet half skinless Drucker. Like he thinks, yeah. that, he thinks that if he survives this, It'll be fine. And he would be like doing press conferences as like this, <laughs> yeah. this like wet zombie guy. <laughs> That's the best. That's what I want. I want an Elon Musk S series of tweets where it's like, there have been mean rumors that I am now a half baked <laughs> clone. None of this is true at Bernie Sanders. <laughs> right. uh, at Joe Rogan Experience, have me on again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we, we probably should do the joke callback. Oh, is that now? Or yeah. Sorry. Yes. So the, the, he gets into one last fight with bad guy clone. This is where we get the callback. He punches his clone, the half-baked clone into the still dying bad guy and does the like, yeah. I didn't mean to screw yourself literally line. Yeah. <laughs> right. And he has to say screw instead of fuck. Which do you don't need to tell us the joke. <laughs> I'm an intelligent human. You could, you don't need to. I got the joke. Once you put punched him into the missionary position, I got it. You didn't need to be like, I remember before when I, I can't say the F word, but before I did say, <laughs> do a screw yourself. And now look, you're screwing yourself. I'm going to wash your faces <laughs> together like you're kissing. <laughs> one, 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 one. I'm giving myself a smooch. That's the thing. He sees two corpses, one half skinless wet zombie on top of another corpse. Yeah. And he, he thinks of active human being fucking that's like he's like yeah. oh this is just like when i said we do yeah. fucking screw sorry oh by the way i know that this half-baked clone is supposed to be a cronenberg-esque horror that we should be scared of only problem is it's a tenth as scary as the fucking doll that was supposed to be the cutesy thing in this movie oh I was my gonna god say, sim girl <laughs> sally has a lot more terror <laughs> to her than this like it, what if he had done the like shown the computer screen it was like clone 60 percent canceling canceling you know oh no and then it comes out and it's that doll and you're like ah it's just sim girl <laughs> sally i knew it <laughs> it's just his personality but in that fucking sim doll sally oh my god talk about horror again much better movie yep Okay, so now Arnold, his plan is to blow up this entire building. And in his head, I guess he's going to erase the concept of cloning as a technology by, mm -hmm. by making this building melt with thermite. Yep. Yep. He set up a very slow burning fuse on the thermite on the oxygen tank. Yeah, which has to reset itself several times because they didn't get out in time. You know, somehow <laughs> the like mm -hmm, intelligent fuse. Oh, oh, you're not out. Okay, hold on. Let me restart. I know I already did it. I'll burn more. It's fine. I'll figure it a out. A roadrunner oh. keeps running by it and pinching I mean, it yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work around you. I'm a, I know I'm a fuse that's not alive, but I fucking, you can't shoot this properly. So I will work around you. <laughs> so they, they boring laser gun fight. Clone jumps onto regular Arnie's helicopter and they, they they make it away. And I just wrote in my notes, honestly, if this movie was a prequel to a sitcom about double Arnold dads trying to raise their kid, <laughs> I would watch the crap out of it. <laughs> Literally, when they both made it, I wrote in my notes, who cares? <laughs> Yeah, we got a we got a great scene of the helicopter almost gonna hit a building, and they did the like same shot several times so that like the fuse, the helicopter would have hit the building four or five times, but they just reset the footage. And then Arnold fly, catches, uh, he like, climbs in the helicopter, and then I guess pushes the don't stall button because it says like, oh no, we're going to stall, stalling, stalling. And then he just pushes a button and then it's not stall somehow. Yeah. Seems like just uh, have that button always pressed down or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just should be an automatic just button. Hold it. Fun thing. fact. Don't stall button uses the exact same technology as the you're about to get blitzed screen. <laughs> 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 Very important. Yeah. So they, they don't stall because he pressed the button and they made it. And then we cut to them hanging out at their office together talking about clone philosophy some more. It's so good because the movie has happened as though it's happened in real time. And now it's like, well, I, I guess the movie is over. What the fuck do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> now that there's two of us, that seems super stupid, right? Yeah, no, super stupid. <laughs> right? And 
clo- so clone Arnold is like, am I really a human? Do I have a soul? And so, I mean, yes, no. Those are the answers to those questions. And <laughs> real Arnold is like, well, no, you had your DNA tested and you had zero defects. Yeah. He has DNA tested and the test didn't say like soulless freak somehow. <laughs> like that wasn't what the computer screen returned. Not only did it not say that, he had a perfect DNA score. Oh, like a hundred. score on it. Because when I when I think of perfect DNA, I think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! I really wanted them to like be working at a custody agreement here. It's like okay, so I will be in my family Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yeah. Well, they kind of do. He lets him. He yeah. He lets him say goodbye to his family. I just think the clone is taking this remarkably well. You know. Yeah. I do feel like you would have the battle of like, yeah, sure, I'm a clone, but I'm also you, so I will kill you and take the family. You know, like, (laughs) why wouldn't, why not? Work out a custody situation. Yeah. Or a fun sexual scenario that they're all into. Here's my question for you, fellas. Did he ever tell his wife? Did his wife ever know any of, about any of this? Ooh. I don't think so. I think. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Did she cheat on him? Technically. No. No. Did he cheat on her? I feel like he cheat. He nope. He didn't fuck anybody in the movie. They didn't <laughs> fuck each other. That's right. That was he just, just in my head. eighteen scenes of almost. That was fucking, just in yeah. your imagination, <laughs> and in all of your notes for every scene of this film. <laughs> Pretty funny though. If that if that happened to me, it, that would be a that would be a weird thing to keep to yourself in your marriage. Okay. Like, not gonna ever tell my wife about the time I was cloned and the clone almost had sex with you and all that. I guess just. Yeah, keep it keep it close to the vest. What if you have sex with your what if you go fuck yourself with your clone? Is that cheating on your spouse? No, that's just masturbating. Just masturbating. <laughs> no, that's sex with a whole other human. Isn't it? No, it's it's just masturbating. If they ran the DNA of the product that came from any of that sex, scientists would be like, there's only one person here. Yeah. It's only <laughs> so it's masturbation, you know? That's how you figure it. out masturbation. That's technically, I asked Andrew. I if, asked if Andrew for the legal one type standard. of cum. It's masturbation. Yep, <laughs> yeah. that's the definition. There's a there's a lot of this cum though. There's it seems that's just one like guy that do, comes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe three or four. He's a big cummer. He just you know <laughs> drinks a lot. He hydrates. Okay, so I think I think we nailed the philosophy of the movie, and um, <laughs> now we're gonna wrap it up back at the family house, and Arnold brought. Michael Rappaport's repet cat Mm. to the house because he's cool with repets now. Yeah. Yeah. To be clear, he did not bring his friend Michael (laughs) Rappaport back to life. He destroyed all the technology that could save him. He's dead (laughs) forever. (laughs) Just like God and that Christian fundamentalist terrorist intended. He is not a good friend, I'll say. Not a good friend. No. Yep. So uh, the movie lands on it's cool to clone animals it's cl- it's cool to clone everything except for a human is that where they landed well and it's cool to clone a human cuz arnold en- ended up fine and the test said totally fine has a soul everything's great and he lives so it's actually it's all fine and arnold killed cloning technology for no reason is the message yeah weird great <laughs> and then we watch the the movie in rewind really quick they like flip book oh us my God. backwards <laughs> why and why the, did they i don't do that? i don't know what why like we we're not, there was no memory moment happening. Like the clone Arnold wasn't doing anything with that. Maybe our memory of the movie was being uploaded to our clones. Interesting. I feel like they could skip that for me. <laughs> I was going to say, if there's one thing I want to save my clone from, it would be the memory of the fucking terrifying, horrible, goddamn uncanny valley. Sim girl Sally. Sim yep. Sally, please erase that from my mind. Oh, it's going right. to haunt my dreams. Yeah. So that's the end. What's the moral of the story? Cloning is bad for some reason, except when it's not. So kill it all and kill a bunch of people just in case. But also it's fine. Okay. Cloning is fine. Eli, where'd you land? Same girl, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it. Moral of the story is the terrifying doll. That's going to do it for our review of the sixth day. But it's not going to do it for the episode just yet. Because we found another terrible movie and we want to tell you about it. So Eli, what's on deck? Originally released under the title Holocaust 2000. Oh, did they change that title? (laughs) Yeah, I can't imagine why they changed it. Uh, We'll be watching the 1977 cult classic, The Chosen. Lovely. (laughs) Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 342 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Thomas for joining us. 
in case anyone's new, where can they hear more Thomas? Oh, opening arguments, uh, serious inquiries only. Check those out, Philosophers in Space. Uh, big opening arguments recently released. Go check that feed. Very important stuff. Oh, A. Ooh, ooh. All right. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for podcasts are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Thomas and Eli, I'm Heath. Promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House Clothes. Breakfast Club Clothes. Animal House Clothes. <laughs> Shortly after this movie, we made Arnold the governor of our state for some reason. <laughs> you did. True story. That's a thing we did. For sure. We did that. And uh, and he wasn't the worst governor, but I guess, like, why, well, why though? Why did it's a weird bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I'd like to add to everyone who hates cloning, don't worry, we're not going to clone you. <laughs> Eli found a reproduction of Sim Girl Sally on the internet during this record and hid it in Thomas's bed during the trip. <laughs> what? What? No, okay. Yeah, ha, ha funny joke. No, but for real, did you, did you do that? I you did would tell me if you did that. I found the duplication. I can't. Han, I can't go in the room. I can't. <laughs> hey, podcast listener. We just cut out 45 I'll, minutes yeah, of Thomas here. screaming. <laughs> the preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.